one of the most influential films of the 1990s and one of my personal favorite movies, Pulp Fiction, is back on the big screen for one night only. Now our film critic here in the Keys, Cheryl Rhodes, he has a review of this movie along with Reservoir Dogs, another one of Quentin Tarantino's classic. Cheryl, thank you for being back on the show with me this morning. Well, thank you for having me, Jenna. It's always fun to come talk with movies. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we always try to pick out something that's sort of making a return mm -hmm. kind of to help you expand your, expand your repertoire of films. Mm -hmm. uh, Quentin Tarantino is a fairly young filmmaker in a sense in that he's only been at it about 20 years, uh, but it seems like only yesterday. Uh, his classic film, Pulp Fiction, is pay, playing Thursday night, but his Reservoir Dogs is playing Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. And both of these films together are to celebrate his 20 years as a filmmaker. Uh, Reservoir Dogs appeared in 1992, and uh, it was an immediate hit. Uh, it it uh, premiered at Sundance, and uh, everybody gave it immediate acclaim. Two years later, Pulp Fiction appeared. It won the Palme d'Or at uh, the Cannes Film Festival, and he was on his way. Now, Quentin Tarantino is a very interesting character. He was born in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. His mother was 16 years old at the time. He was named after the Burt Reynolds character on Gunsmoke, uh, a character called Quint. And he uh, moved around a lot. He wound up in California, went to high school in California. And even though he had a high, uh, he had a high IQ, 160, uh, he dropped out of high school to become a filmmaker. Most young wannabe filmmakers, he wound up working in a video store, a, a classic place no longer around called Video Archives. And there he learned about movies. When people say, did you ever go to film school? He said, no, I went to films. Because he worked in the video store, he learned about genre, although he claims his first introduction to jam genre was watching the old movie Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. But he would recommend sort of unusual films to his customers. and. One of his customers, he recommended a French film called uh, Au Revoir Les Enfants. And the customer said, I don't want to see no Reservoir Dogs. <laughs> and that's where he got the name for his first movie. Really? Uh, he, he, that's where it started. That's where it all started. And, but the name of the movie never appears in the movie. It's never used. It's just the title. Mm -hmm. And it's about six diamond thieves who pull what they hope is going to be the perfect robbery, but it goes wrong. And they suspect that one of them is perhaps a police informer, so they turn on each other. And it's a very violent movie, and Quentin Tarantino's movies tend to be fairly violent. Uh, it uses the expletive for, uh, uh, for sex uh, uh, 272 times. Uh, it has a lot of blood and gore. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim Roth laid in puddles of fake blood so long in the filming that they had to, had to scrape him off the floor. He stuck to the floor. That's disgusting. A lot of people <laughs> wanted to be in the movie. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, when he was working in the, in the video store, he wrote a couple of film scripts, and he mm -hmm. sold one of them to, uh, to Tony Scott, uh, the, the great producer-director. And Scott made this movie called uh, True Romance, which is a great, fun movie. And Scott wanted to make Reservoir Dogs, but Tarantino said, no, I'm going to make it myself. And so he had $30,000 in a 16-millimeter camera, and he set out to make it. But it turned out that his writing partner's physical therapist's wife got the script to Harvey Keitel. And Harvey Keitel just phoned him up and said, I'd like to be in your movie. And suddenly it went from a $30,000 movie to a million five. Mm -hmm. And that's how they made the movie. Uh, uh, it turned out that he wanted James Wood to be in the movie, but uh, uh, Wood's uh, agent turned it down. Mm -hmm. When he later found out, when the movie star later found out that his agent turned down this great role, he fired him. Smart man then, right? Well, he was a smart man. <laughs> uh, George Clooney wanted to be in the movie, but they turned him down to play the role of Mr. Blonde. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, they offered that role to Christopher Walken, but he turned it down. So they wound up getting uh, Michael Madsen, mm -hmm. and he took the role, and it was uh, his big break. And in fact, he's now uh, made uh, Tarantino the godfather of his, of his children. <laughs> so he was the right person for the role. He was the right person for the role. It, it, was, a, it was a great uh, film, a great ride. And then two years later, he made Pulp Fiction, uh, which is a, a sort of four different stories woven together of uh, uh, characters trying to rob a restaurant, uh, a, a couple of mob guys, a boxer, a, a mobster's wife. Mm -hmm. And uh, Uma Thurman didn't really want the role. And he finally talked her into it by phoning her up and reading her the part over the telephone. 
And really? so she accepted it. So that's how he convinced her. She was the perfect woman for that role. Yes, I think. and and he's often described her as his muse now. Mm -hmm. And of course, she was in Kill Bill Part One and Part Two. Mm -hmm. He has a lot of eccentricities as a filmmaker. He he uh, often tells nonlinear stories. Uh, they're often retrospective. They sometimes show the main character taking a long walk with the camera following him. Uh, they sometimes focus on somebody's face getting the reaction while somebody else is talking. Uh, he uses sometimes uh, 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 sort of placards in the movie to announce characters' names or scenes or things like that. Uh, he's considered uh, by one ranking the eighth greatest filmmaker of all times. Mm -hmm. And Reservoir Dogs uh, is uh, considered one of the great films, but Pulp Fiction, uh, Entertainment Weekly, ranks it as number one of the new classics. And tonight at the Regal Cinema, you can see this classic on the big screen. That is exactly where it belongs. Thanks for tuning in this morning. I hope you can join me back here tomorrow morning at 7 and 8.30 a.m. I'll be joined with clinical psychologist Dr. Stephen Ragusia. Take care, everyone, and have a great rest of your day.